This is the Rebel Scum Podcast. Available in video on YouTube and audio wherever you listen to your podcasts. Every week, Brock and James talk the latest rumors, news, and theories from a galaxy far, far away. Support us on Patreon for exclusive offers and join the Star Wars discussion. Patreon.com slash Rebel Scum Podcast. Here are your hosts, Brock and James. You're always scum. Rebel scum. Hello, everybody. Thanksgiving roundtable once again. It's exactly one year since we've done this. And we've got our friend Pete here. Hello. Happy Thanksgiving. The wrong Thanksgiving. (laughs) <laughs> are we start that's What's how up? we're gonna start <laughs> yeah that's exactly uh, how. we do this one time yeah. a year uh this doesn't have a start <laughs> we don't and we don't uh we don't do this what for fun. the canadian real thanksgiving <laughs> yeah why, why don't you do it for the canadian thanksgiving i appreciate the yeah. the support of the u.s thanksgiving the only real thanksgiving but why uh <laughs> <laughs> because um you know actually we started because when we first did the podcast seven years ago we started the youtube channel and on american thanksgiving it was the holiday football's on so we kind of thought well what if we just put up a bunch of videos and we did and and um i don't know it's just become kind of a thing where we have like a big topic and then the last and then the i think the last jedi came out the next year so we decided to have a big round table on that that year and it's just kind of become a thing that we do, and seventeen people watch and listen, so it's great. It's really <laughs> well. Happy Thanksgiving to them, even if they yes. are Canadian. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. And they're not. Yeah. They are absolutely not. We don't, get, we don't get support of it. But Brock, today we're going to talk some live yeah. action, Disney Plus live action, and then we're going to give the definitive, definitive mm. rankings of those <laughs> whole five shows. That's nice. <laughs> Right nice. on, right on, right on. Let's get into it then. Yeah. Yeah, start. So we started with Mandalorian four years ago, like just four years ago, almost to the mm. day now. We got Mando. Since then, we've got five shows and two more seasons of Mando. Pete, what have your thoughts been of the live action Star Wars and Disney Plus? Have they, has it been mostly hit or mostly missed for you? I think it's been mostly hit, and it's it's nice to kind of uh, finally it's interesting. After during during the strike, as you guys know, we didn't talk much on our shows at all about uh, Ahsoka while it was running and it was nice because I kind of was able to separate myself from it and just sort of watch it all as a fan and when I really started thinking about the series like I think for the most part they're good I don't I, I think they're great at expanding the lore and I love the stories um, but I think yeah I mean to, to answer the to answer your question directly they're mostly hit um, and I think that if we're honest I think it's not all hit and I think that that's part of where sometimes the fandom ends up is in this weird sort of defensive posture where no matter what you say, it's all good. Every episode, every minute, every single thing we got was great. And it's most of it is very, very good and perfectly fun star Wars, but I don't think it's all been 100% slam dunk. Brock, before I go to you, I really think he's taking a shot at the book of Boba Fett with what he's saying. And so I'm just going to remove him from this conversation. (laughs) Uh, Brock, what about you? Mostly hit or mostly miss? I think Brock's frozen on that thing. It's a cold day in Canada. It, it, uh, Brock, it mostly hit or mostly miss for you? <laughs> uh, I think Pete is accurate. Like, it's like, it's hit or miss is like perspective, of course, but like, it has been successful in creating, like, expanding the lore and then like, I think the success is like visually, it looks awesome. Like, I think that is where we're winning story wise, or I don't know. Like, I think we're all starving to go in the new direction of what Star Wars is. And I think Mandalorian's success is profoundly on that part where we're like growing something new, but like they're still not venturing out there. So it's like, uh, if I had to review, it'd be like, I liked all of it and I want more. Mm-hmm. But it's like, 
I don't know how to like really gauge it, right? So it's a fun time to be a Star Wars fan, in my opinion. I agree. For me, these shows still are the books of the 90s. Like these are just mm. the side stories, expanding the lore, kind of growing. They're not the movie the movies, if we ever get one again, they're gonna be the big event stuff. But these are like the little stories to tie us over. That's why something like I really enjoy the book of both that, but I don't I don't compare it to like Revenge of the Sith necessarily. I kind of take it, I would compare it more to like the tales of mm. Jabba's Palace or something yeah. that I would compare. Like, and that's where it is. So it's expanding the lore and these characters. And so that's what I've really been enjoying. I do think it's been a lot of hit and miss as well. Like, I don't think they've all been great. Uh, I think Kenobi had some stumbling blocks. Um, only Kenobi. No, <laughs> but Mando obviously had some. I think, you know, Mando season two is an intriguing season because. Everyone loves it now. Everyone loves Mando season two because Luke comes at the end and he saves it. And it's all, it's a great ending, obviously. But when it was happening, I don't know if either one of you remember, people weren't really in, digging it so much, I'll say. Like they were kind of like on the fence about it. The, 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 the spider people, the eating the eggs, like hmm. the, there was all like things in there. People weren't enjoying it as much as today they claim that they do. Uh, so I think we also have a revisionist history of what we like in Star Wars as well. I would. I think you're you're right about that. I hadn't thought of it that way because you're now that you say it, I do remember. I mean, remember the controversy about Grogu eating frog ladies' eggs, and people were like, "Oh my god, he's eating the end of her species." This is like, no, it's it's a it's a goofy little Yoda <laughs> puppet <laughs> eating eating a, a you know. Uh, but it's interesting because um, I think the reason Mando season two at the time had issues. And again, you know, we may look back at Mando season three differently as well, but we all, we now were, by the time we got to season two, we were, we were in full on theorizing mode and mm -hmm. this is where it's going to go. And this is what we're going to see. And, um, and, and, oh, we're, you know, now that Ahsoka is in the show, that means this is going to happen. And, and I think that that is the number one killer of Star Wars. And I think that's why things like Kenobi, which was to me a, a perfectly fine show. Um, you know, I, I, you and I go back and forth and joke about Book of Boba Fett, but I think Kenobi at the end of the day had some of the biggest issues just because I think from a technical standpoint, Brock, you were saying everything looks good. I think Kenobi was disappointing in the way it looked to me. I felt like the story was a cool story. It was actually a really cool story. Um, but again, it was, it took us in a, in an unexpected direction. And like that to me is, is why last Jedi is such a, uh, such an interesting movie because I walked into it with my own expectations and none of it happened. And at first I didn't like it. And now it's become one of my favorite star Wars stories, maybe not movies, but certainly star Wars stories. And Rise of Skywalker, I thought for sure I knew what was going to happen, and it was it was all over the place and missed so many of the opportunities that it was given. I think that's where we are with the shows. And I think even when you go into something like Ahsoka, which was generally well-regarded by just about everybody, I think we went in with such expectation that it was hard to hit. And that's probably why Andor was quietly maybe the best of all the shows to if to a broader audience because there was no expectation we had no idea what to you know nobody went in with oh vader's going to do this and we're going to see a return of that character and we're going to see this and that i think it just it just worked on its own and i think that's the biggest challenge with with these shows now is it's the culture of theorizing and headcanon and if it doesn't show exactly what i've decided it should see uh, i should <laughs> see it's wrong so yeah absolutely i think Head can it's it's weird when you like we we talked before we recorded the the Morak thing, mm -hmm. where the obsession with who's behind the mask they tell you who's behind the mask <laughs> and we, like like I, I think it's fun when they're like oh it's Star Killer it's that's fun to say but when you think about it it makes zero sense <laughs> whatsoever because Star Killer does not exist in right. the Star Wars story that we're watching it exists in the video game that you play but yep. in the Star Wars that we're watching. There's no reference to Star Killer, so why would this character be Star Killer? And I think sometimes you, you like S Snoke. I think was different because things yeah. could have made more sense for Snoke. But sometimes I think we gotta just re reel it in just a little bit and just enjoy it for what it is, and and maybe not not get so wrapped up in our own uh, theories. Yeah, really, go ahead, Rock. 
Yeah. The really the answer is can we turn the internet off? Because that's <laughs> what it is. It's like yeah. the original Star Wars and this the prequels to an extent didn't have this internet of like this this ma- immediate response. Like I remember reading about Phantom Menace on a computer when it was just like <laughs> this is a website, and I'm like, wow. It's just but like. <laughs> It's like now you if you don't watch the episode within the the five hours after yeah. it comes out, like you're well, you gotta like, sorry, you're gonna get stuff spoiled for you. So it's like, yeah. you're it's just like, I don't know. There was a lot of ideas floating around there, but yeah, it's like I feel like to truly be surprised by Star Wars, we have to stop listening to the others because it's just like you were saying about season two, where it's like. Oh, everyone was sort of like, I don't know, like maybe it's because I don't really interact a ton with like internet Star Wars fans. I talk to James and occasionally people like yourself, Pete, but it's just like, I don't know what you're talking about because all I've experienced is like, oh, Mandalorian, 6 a.m., let's watch it. It's just like, but then that's like because I decide to like, not go on twitter for one it's just like yeah it is like it's like what are we talking about though we're talking about something small insular like unless i mean i'll i'll take that all back unless there was some kind of like actual report that like it no was there wasn't this and, I, and, this. and i think that's the thing that that helped me with ahsoka was the fact that i wasn't engaging in those conversations and example, yeah. and and when people were all up on the the yeah he's star killer my first thought was that's ridiculous, not just because of what you said, James, because you're 100% right, but because if you look at it and realize that these shows, to be successful, if you're writing a successful television show, you can't write it just for the 5% of the fan base that lives on the internet and wants to see that stuff. <laughs> and it, it needs to work as a show. So so Morak or Ma- yeah, Mor- whatever you say his name, <laughs> he was going to be just a cool ca- He was going to be the Boba Fett of this show from yeah. 1980. He was going to be like the cool looking character and, you know, meet his demise. And he was just there to look cool. And he was just there to be a cool henchman. And that's that's Star awesome. Wars. He doesn't need he doesn't need to be more than that. I mean, look, if you want to talk about wasted characters, talk about the Knights of Ren. Talk about <laughs> characters that were really cool looking and did nothing. So I think you hit something right there. That's a trope, at least in Star Wars. It's like yeah. that's the Boba Fett. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually <laughs> says a million things in two words. Like yeah. amazing. Yeah. Imagine if if, if uh, Empire Strikes Back came out today. Who's Boba Fett? Like that would be everywhere. Like who's right. Anakin is clearly in Boba. Fett. I like, <laughs> but I will say the greatest Boba Fett theory of all time that needs to come to, which it won't anymore. But was I don't know if you remember, but it was Kidster was Boba Fett at one point. <laughs> that was the that was the big theory. Was Kidster was Boba Fett? And I'm all on board. I'm I, you retcon that every day of the week. I am. I'm Make it happen. Kidster. I'm all yeah. for that. Yes. I yes. play I, Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, I do for everything. <laughs> yep. I, I like. I I like. I, I was, it's funny that you mentioned Ahsoka. Like, I feel a lot of stuff that happened in Ahsoka was like a direct Filoni just trolling of the internet, where it's just like, oh, this is what you want. You can't yeah. have it. Like, <laughs> probably true. I like I like Ahsoka a lot. Appeal. I'll go to you first. I like Ahsoka a lot, but Brock, you know how I feel. I just felt like it was. It, it just. It, it didn't. It just stopped. It just didn't feel like a full, complete season. Not even a full, complete story, just a full, complete season. Like, Mando season three, the first two episodes to me were the same, where they just kind of stopped. They're just like, ah, you know what? We can't go any longer. And Ahsoka, for me, Pete, it just felt like it it went. And I'm like, this, like, it it was on the cusp of being, like, my favorite. And then it, it just ended. And it was like, it was like Journey was playing Don't Stop Believing. And it just stopped. And I'm like, what? And then the, the problem is there's no there's no word on season two, and they're like they're in talks. Well, the way you did it, you gotta have it. Yeah, no, you hit on exactly why Ahsoka went from it didn't even go from being my number one show to my number two. It just went. It's I have a big problem, and, and James, as a writer, you will get this. Um, my biggest problem with a lot of streaming shows, whether it's um, whether it's a Star Wars streaming show or, or any other, 
is they are written now to create a second season. And my biggest fear going into Ahsoka, which I couldn't talk about because the writers were on strike, so I didn't get to share this fear ahead of time, which is probably fine. Um, but my biggest fear with Ahsoka was that it was going to not be a complete story. And as we were going, and this is why when we went into the last episode, I was like, okay, cool. It's going to, the story is going to be complete. They're going to, yeah, it's going to leave us wanting to see what Thrawn ends up doing. And, but it's going to end on a, you know, we're fine. We're going to find out what Balin was looking for. And we're going to no. they just left way too much of it out there. And that, that is really that I, I don't love that at all. And I think that was also, um, that's why Mando season three, honestly, I loved it because it ended like we don't need a Mando season four. In fact, I know they're talking about they're going to start filming it soon, but I almost don't want a Mando season four because it ended. So if you think about the first episode where there was this this dirt eating bounty hunter who was who was just doing his job and didn't care if he had to kill somebody, take him in warm or take him in cold, didn't care finds this baby and isn't sure what to do and then ends with him literally putting his feet up while his newfound baby son is playing in the yard like that's we're done that story is over we don't need more of that ahsoka was like this is cool they're finding ezra they're doing everything that they said they were going to do if, if you're a rebels fan it was a great sort of we're getting to that point where the story is finally going to get some closure. And we went from where's Ezra to where's Sabine and Ahsoka. And that's, <laughs> that's not cool. That's that's. And especially as you're saying, we don't know when that story is going to be finished. If it's going to be finished. I mean, conceivably they could leave them there and just continue with the rest of the, the new Republic story. It's kind of like um, Kira with Darth Maul at the end of Solo. <laughs> yes. You just leave us yeah. hanging. Why? Why? Yeah. Go on, Brock. Any thoughts on Ahsoka that you haven't shared yet, or want to reiterate? I know it's just like it's. <laughs> I want it to be the number one, but it's just like it relies too much on you knowing why Ezra and Thrawn are important. So it's like mm -hmm. it's like it, it was great, and I would love more. Um, and it's I, I. This goes back to what I said. It's like. That that season, especially, maybe I need to get a newer TV or something, but like everything look in it looked beautiful, like on a aesthetic side. So I was like, yeah, put me back in that world. I honestly like let, let me just follow hair around, like just doing rebel stuff. Like, yep. Like I'm in, but then but the story just like it it like it just like James says, it just sort of stops. It's just sort of like okay. And it's like, well. I, especially to go to a new galaxy and then they're like, we're out of here. And you're like, but isn't this the premise of like, we're starting a whole new thing where nothing can with Skywalker is involved. So it's like, I don't know. It's, I, I, I will watch it again. I loved it, but I don't know. Yeah. It was so close. Yeah, I will say it's, it's so of the, when we're doing the ranking, I asked 37 people for their rankings. Mm. And, and uh, two people had Ahsoka number one. Two mm. people had Ahsoka oh, number one. There was a lot of... I, I'll say this. The list itself, we're going to get to in a second, is not surprising. But individual lists, which I will not share, were surprising. Like People were all over with how they mm. felt about it. Like, all over. And I, and I can tell you, a friend of mine had uh, Kenobi number one. And then uh, after he sent the list, like 15 minutes... Uh, of him justifying why it was number one i said that's <laughs> fine i don't it's okay that is, like you don't understand the lore building i'm like i do understand i i didn't say anything you're just going on yeah so it was, it was but it was uh it was fun to see so 37 people and what happens is so if if you if if mando was your number one there's five love action you would get like five points and i would add them all up and that's how we go one through five Mm. And it's a lot of fun. Before we get to it, Pete, anything else you want to say about live action stuff? I, you know, I think, yeah, I we had um, we had Kyle Newman on the show the other day. Not that I'm name dropping, but he's the guy who did Fanboys, and <laughs> um, he's been on the show four times. He's a friend of the show. Um, Actually, but... <laughs> my friend, I did Kenobi. If anyone at Kenobi first is also friends with him, so you have that in common. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um. So interestingly, um, he made it, you know, he, 
it's funny. He's one of those guys that he's definitely an OT guy. And, um, but he made a valid point and he said, you know, the thing that always made star Wars great, even the prequels, whether you like the stories or not, is they were groundbreaking and they were very big on, um, you know, they were, George was committed to making sure he didn't put it out till it was what he wanted. And then of course he always, you know, went and made changes when he had the chance, but, um, but that's what made it. It was, it was, a very deep story from a lore perspective. You may not have gotten the whole story, but you also got technical brilliance. And I think that's why Mando was so amazing was because it was really the first use of the, the volume. And I don't know about you guys, but when I found out what the volume was, I was amazed that I didn't see it while they were shooting it. And then what had started to happen was I started to look for the volume mm -hmm. and I started to be able to see it. And I think, again, that was my biggest problem with Kenobi as a show um, was it felt very, very small. It felt like it was on a soundstage. Now, of course, it was shot during COVID and they they probably pushed through production. And, and so there was a lot of, of those things that were happening around it. But I feel the, the other piece that, that Kyle said that I, I tend to agree with, and I, it's not just Star Wars. We talked a little bit about Marvel before we went on air. Um, there's this constant flow that is expected i mean people are right now like well, when the hell skeleton crew gonna come out we don't even know when the next star wars is coming out. i was like guys we used to wait three years we waited <laughs> between you know the end of 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 uh of the return of the jedi to the phantom menace like 16 years yeah. like we can and i get it because i want it too like as chris ryan says on my show all the time gimme 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 like yeah if you want to give me skeleton crew tomorrow i'll watch it i'll be ready for it but I do worry that, and I think, you know, Mando season three was a little bit disjointed, but it ended perfectly. Um, so I just want to make sure, like like I have any say over it, but I, I, I'm hoping that they're making sure that they're taking the time to do it right. That's why I think something like Andor worked really, really well. Nobody was clamoring for it. Um, and when it happened, it was like, it was... It was fresh and new in a Star Wars uniform, whereas I guess what came before that was Kenobi and Book of Boba Fett. It was kind of an extension of the way yeah. they did things on Mando. So I want them to find new and exciting. That's why I feel like Ahsoka actually worked really well, too, because I feel like it, it looked it looked like Star Wars. It felt like it Star did. Wars and and um, and it didn't feel like I was confined at all by it. So. I guess what I'm saying, what I'm saying is take the time with it. Do, you know, do on location stuff, mix it with the volume. Don't be so enamored with the tools. Um, you know, as, uh, as they said in uh, Jurassic park, uh, you were so worried about whether or not you could, you didn't stop to think whether or not you should. And I think they should really make sure, is it a story worth telling? Is it a story that's going to, to have impact? I think to add to that too, I don't know how it is now what they're doing, but book of Boba Fett, the one thing I like about it too, though, is it had a beginning, middle, and an end as well. Yeah. Yep. But it also felt like maybe they're positioning these characters for the next level, and I'm I, and if you do it like that, I'm okay. I'm okay with them doing that as well. Like give us these side stories and then include them in the bigger picture, if if you want. I think it works like that. Uh, but uh, that's one thing I like about Book of Wolf is it, it, it had the beginning, middle, and end, and we don't get that all the time, as we said two seconds ago. Brock, anything else you want to add to the live action? Uh, gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I just skeleton it cruise. It sounds exciting, man. Jude Law, uh, Acolyte. Guy, can we just talk briefly about Acolyte? Sure. Oh, yeah. Reckon? I am excited for Acolyte because it just sounds like a cool show. And you brought up uh, one thing with Ahsoka is. I don't know what it's going to be like Accolade, but Ahsoka for me used the Star Wars theme uh, music brilliantly, mm -hmm. like it, the score, and and it felt like Star Wars, like you said, like with lightsabers were back. I was like, oh man, I did miss these uh, things. Yeah. Like I felt yeah. every time they lit, there's a there's that like last episode, second last episode where Ezra is just in the ship and he turns on his lightsaber, and I was like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't realize it and then i did i'm like i really like lightsabers yeah and that's why i think i was disappointed with the ending i'm like this could have been my number one just based on lightsabers but the fighting i thought was great but accolade can bring us all of that and i hope to your point earlier pete is that they do a full story because andor was kind of i was thinking about andor today where it's like it felt like it started it felt like it ended and then it left us with that tease for what's to come yeah but it gave me a complete story and then teased 
the next bit. And I hope that's what we get from Acolyte. Right, which I think works so well. Right, you got that full story. And also, I love what they did. They did they did the thing that people don't give Clone Wars enough credit for, and that is they did three episode stories. Yeah. And, yeah. and it continued. And I think that, you know, again, Mando season three was like one big kind of... And I agree with you 100%. Show. It was... They were like, okay, well, we got to chop it up into eight pieces. Can you do that? Yeah, I guess we'll cut it here, and yeah, we can cut it over here, and we'll cut it there. That'll be fine. Whereas Andor, and the other the other big difference is Tony Gilroy went into Andor saying, okay, I'm going to take it from this point all the way to this point, and I know where I'm going. I know for the most part how part how I'm going to get there, and and he did it that way. And and again, he know. Maybe it's because he is an established movie maker. He knows, you know, even even with as much as the Marvel movies are always setting up the next thing with the post credit scenes. There's other than uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Um, was it Infinity War and Endgame? It was. Um, they weren't like nothing was bridged. You got your sequel and you got your next part of the story, but the movie ended. And you were like, yeah, that was a good movie or that wasn't a good movie. Whereas with these episodes and now these seasons, I mean, yeah, Kenobi ended as well, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like that. And that's, I mean, house of dragon and stuff like that too. I'm, I'm the same way with that. Any show that I'm on. That's why I love the, um, who's the guy who did uh, house of usher and did, um, oh, oh, yeah. midnight yeah. mass and, um, Mike yeah, I'm like they're phenomenal stories and you know, it's an eight part story. And it sometimes the episodes just end, and you're like, "Oh, I need more." Luckily, it's Netflix, so you don't have to wait. Um, but it goes; to, it's a full story, and it it ends, and it's not setting up the next thing. And I th I wish we would look at limited series, as they're called, as limited series, and be willing to end. Yeah, but what you just said is true. It's in Mando season three, Boba Fett, Kenobi, Brock, and I talk about this all the time. I felt like those were binge shows. They mm -hmm. would have benefited from being dropped all at once because they were movies. They were just one big long story. Yep. With a, they, within it was a beginning, middle, and end. But in this episodes, they weren't. They were just kind of they were what they were. And Jack Black is the best thing that happened to Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and I, I think the other thing too is, and I, I was actually I said this to uh, my dad and I have always talked about movies and TV shows as as far back as as I can remember. And I said, I think that we're still waiting for screenwriters to understand the skill of writing an eight part television series. I think it's because honestly, that's the biggest problem with Book of Boba Fett and Kenobi um, to me is that they felt like two and a half hour movies that were stretched over eight episodes. Uh, I And I felt like as a result, they didn't know, can I expand the story here and how far am I allowed to take it? And 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 so as a result it didn't it felt kind of um incohesive uh, as a result again you're right i mean that is probably my favorite thing about book of boba fett is that it had an ending that was like it just the the episode en or the series ended if we get a season two there's room for it if we don't we got boba's yeah. story and that's fine yeah brock anything acolyte or beyond i'm excited like I mean, I don't know. Have you guys seen the the uh, Madam Web trailer yet? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I watched that. I was like, <laughs> in thirty seconds, you sold me on a character I did not care about. So I'm like, if we live in a world where you, I'm like, I'll go see that movie. I've only seen clips. It could be garbage. I don't know. <laughs> it's out like on paper. Like that sounds like a bad idea. But like, <laughs> let's go into the left field. So yeah. Acolyte could go there. We, all, If you listen to our podcast, I've read all the High Republic stuff. I think it's very, very cool, and I think they should do more into it. So, uh, I mean, I don't – like, this is maybe tighter to the normal timeline with this show, but I'm very excited to see what more – and, like, the, the pictures that we have seen, I'm like, ooh, yeah. this is cool. So, I, I mean, there's nothing to be said about it till we get something, yeah. right? But – I'm excited. Do you guys think that there's any challenge and part of the challenge from a public perspective is the fact that these things take place all over the timeline. And for the average fan who doesn't understand where we are at any given moment, 
it gets confusing, right? Like you watch Andor and you're like, where, wait, the, he died in that movie thing, but now what's happening here? And it, it, you know, Acolyte is, I, I too am, I, I haven't read any of the High Republic stuff. I'm ashamed to Me say, either. but, yeah. um, but like, I know where it takes place when my dad watches it on Disney plus, he'll be like, wait a second. When is this? This is what, and, and <laughs> again, I hope I hope they do a crawl like they did with Ahsoka because that was amazing. That just pulled me right in. But um, and, and I think it can work, and I have confidence that it will work. That they'll be able to set it up in the story in a way that's not too um, sort of hitting you over the head. But do you guys think that because Mando takes place after the original trilogy, Ahsoka takes place after the original trilogy, Andor is before the original trilogy, Kenobi is somewhere? before the original trilogy book of boba fett was you know like these things are all they're they're hard to pick up unless you're like a diehard fan like us or am i just reading too much into it i i think when rogue one came out people were trying to figure out where ray was i remember that for a brief yeah. period of time I, I had friends that were like is that ray's mom in that yeah. movie yeah yeah <laughs> I, I think brock i don't know how you feel but I think, I think they should have called like Book of Boba Fett like the Mandalorian Book of Boba Fett, and like yes. All, but I do think with the volume because Ahsoka, I mean, I think Ahsoka looks probably the best, but Ahsoka, Mando, Boba Fett, even Kenobi, which doesn't count, but they all kind of look aesthetically the same. Yeah, like they're very similar. Whereas Andor is so different. That's that true. You, that almost when just looking at it, you don't associate it with the other ones. Where Book of Boba Fett. Right away, you're like, oh, even though he shows up in it for two episodes, so you associate it with Mandalorian <laughs> right away. Even Ahsoka, you kind of have that feeling. So I think if they make them look a little different like that, maybe that'll help. And I, th- I don't know, I feel like the Acolyte's got to have some kind of crawl in front of it, Brock. I think, like, it's a person-to-person experience, right? Mm-hmm. Like, my wife, she'll watch this stuff, but she hasn't finished watching Ahsoka, and I think she just barely finished watching obi-wan and it's like she's someone that like becoming a star wars fan can follow it she's very into sci-fi some fantasy comics like she can follow all that she loves marvel so like the idea of following a massively franchise thing is not impossible for her but she has said to me it's like i feel less and less engaged so that's speaking from someone that isn't maybe a fan to our to the level of us, but is is there. Like she goes yeah. to conventions, she understands how these people talk. Uh, and I agree with what James says. It's like when you went to see Rogue One, you're like, well, what like isn't this the continuation of that story? Which is the logical thing to do. So, but people still went and enjoyed and understood. I think people who might have had an issue like that in the movies are also not the people coming to Disney Plus and watching it. I'm sure they they do exist, but like I always use my parents as a comparison. They're not watching Disney Plus. Yeah. That I I don't think they even sign into my it's just like my Disney Plus account. It's just like it's like I think if you are searching out if you are it's either you're either one of two people when you're watching this stuff on Disney Plus. Someone that's searching for it and is willing to learn how to understand or already understands or two you're like star wars i'll watch it like yeah. oh and then maybe put it together or and so i don't know what happens after that but i i've asked people that question like because some people will wait and just binge it I'm like oh let me know what you think yep and it's like a lot of the times people are like i get it so it's just like i think it's person to person you know yeah yep. i guess gonna have a grow Brock, what what would win her back? Do you, is there anything that like because maybe more to get her more engaged? Like, was there something like, like is there something specific that's losing her? I'm just asking because you brought. No, her. I don't. I don't really know. I think Mandalorian she liked because she right. it's more digestible, and I think she appreciated Andor as well. I think it's at this point it's just so much too much too much. It's just like that I makes don't, sense. She screams at the at the she screams at the TV when we watch Loki too, <laughs> season two. She's like, "What is going on?" <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yeah, Loki almost needed to come with its own TVA handbook so he could follow along and be like, "Oh, okay, yeah. I get it." Yeah, yeah. But I loved Loki. I thought Loki was fantastic. Yeah, I still haven't finished, but uh, 
I, yeah, I, I'm a bad reference for all of this because I'm like Marvel, <laughs> Star Wars. I'm in. Like, yeah, no, bro, 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 Brock's the easiest sell ever. Madam yeah. Web, I'm in. And you, like, you actually, you rated Morbius the number one movie of that year. <laughs> That's one I never finished. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. The the, the Sony Spider Verse is like the. It is full of movies that you're like, this is gonna suck, and you watch it, and you're like, that was awful, but I really liked it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I feel that like both Venom movies, honestly, yeah. they're horrible, but I, I really liked them. I don't yeah. know why. So. I, I remember when I left Morbius, I was like, that was really bad, but it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Like, it's I, well, it's because I, I, probably because we grew up with those '90s and yeah. early 2000s. Uh, superhero movies, which were horrible, yeah. Yeah. and we were so, just so happy we, we had them. <laughs> we know what we could be having. That's right. Like these like, are great. I, I watched Batman and Robin last night. This is fantastic. Right. This is art. This is I don't see Schwarzenegger as as. as <laughs> this is fine. This is good. <laughs> By the way, there's a bat a Batman Christmas cartoon coming out. Have you guys seen the trailer for this? I did. I did. Yeah. I thought it looked great, and the Mr. Freeze sounded like a Schwarzenegger Mr. Freeze, and I was like, <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> It looked good. It looked like a like a, a Christmas special from when I was a kid when you would watch like 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 X-Men Christmas Power Rangers Christmas. I didn't watch that. Like X-Men Christmas special and stuff. Like it's just ridiculous. I'm like, this is what we need more of. This fun stuff here. <laughs> All right, let's go to the ranking stuff. This is when it gets important. Yeah, that doesn't work. Let's go. <laughs> Our faces are too big. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. Uh, by the way, the New York Jets winning the Super Bowl. Pete. <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> I've, I, so I, I probably have told you this before. I'm a Flyers fan since I'm five years old. I'm a Phillies fan. So I, I, it was, you know, a, an exciting yet disappointing fall. Uh, but I'm yeah. a Giants fan in football. Why? Uh, because I grew up in North Jersey and, um, <laughs> But see, at least at least being a Giants fan, at least I've won a couple of Super Bowls as a fan. I know what it's <laughs> like. But man, I'll tell you, I haven't done fantasy football in like the last five or six years, and I haven't watched football. Like I'm just like I yeah, just because yeah. I mean, even if I was watching the Giants, I'm not sure I'd be watching football. They're just so yeah, bad, true. so bad. But anyway, How, sorry. But like you have like you, you had like an out with the Eagles. You could have gone right in with the Eagles. My biggest fear is that my son, because of where we live now, becomes an Eagles fan. That's my biggest fear in life. Goldberg. Go, oh, uh, Goldberg. We had we had Adam F. Goldberg on this past week too. And I, <laughs> I, I said to Adam, it was great. I it was so it, not to I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, I don't care. We had Adam F. Goldberg, we had Jeremy Kuhn, and we had Kyle Newman, because they did the movie uh, Disturbance yeah. in the Force. Which is about the holiday special. Which, if you get a chance to see it, you have to watch it. Whether you like the holiday special or not, you just—it's ha- such, it's so good. It's like one of the best. Yeah, as a Star Wars fan, as a pop culture fan, it's amazing. But I got to tell um, Jeremy Kuhn that um, you know, in my house, we quote Napoleon Dynamite all the time because he was the producer uh, or director of Napoleon Dynamite, producer, I think. Um, and I get to tell Adam F. Goldberg that I'm equal parts. I've always thought myself as sort of equal parts Barry and equal parts uh, Adam. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot more Johnny Atkins than I want to admit the, the Rush fan kid. And so, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it was just, it was just cool talking to, because yeah, Goldberg's is my. I use it as reference for my kids. I'm like, let's see what Daddy's life was like when he was a kid. Let's go to the Goldbergs. <laughs> so anyway, and Rush is variety. This rush is variety. <laughs> the fanboys quote of the day. Yep. There's, I think there's a B word after that, but this is a children's show, and we will not. Right. We don't want to go. We don't want to. Fanboys is a fantastic film, by the oh way. Oh my gosh. I love. Yes. Films. For sure. All right, here we go. Ranking 37 votes in. I tallied them up. I couldn't do the math, so I use a calculator on my phone. <laughs> there were. Like I said, though, it was like it was. It was cool to see like everybody was so different. You know, there's only five, but I, I there were so many different ones, and and um, age I think played a factor on on where people ranked as well. So it was it was fun, but a lot of uh, friends on YouTube, podcast friends, and Patreon were a part of this, and we're gonna do it again January first, Brock, for the movies, eleven movies, live action, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. What will be number one? That's what it's, it's always coming down to. Although Revenge of the Sith has been really like pushing last little while. 
Like the kids who grew up with the prequels are getting older and they're having their say on Revenge of the They're Sith. old enough to vote in the in the yeah. Rebel Scum podcast <laughs> they poll are. now. And then uh, Last Jedi, we'll see how many people are disappointed where that ends up. On both ends. We never know. <laughs> uh, do you guys have any guesses on what uh, number five was? Any guesses? Based on what you've said so far... I can't remember either one of your lists either. To be completely honest with you, yeah. I can't remember. I, I'm going to say I, I, leaving my own personal rankings out, I'm going to say Andor ended up at the bottom. I was almost going to say that as well because it's like if you don't get that show, you do not get that show. Right. <laughs> uh no, Kenobi. Oh, there uh, you go. Kenobi. Kenobi was a weird one. I'm. I'll look at this. Uh, the numbers. There was a lot. Of, it was last on a lot of lists. Mm. It was first on one, and second on three. Okay. So it was. It, but it was last. Almost every other one it was last on, and it was two on a couple. But yeah, people. I don't know what it was. It's just I think people wanted more Kenobi. Maybe. Yeah. A little disappointed. I think that the the volume, as cool as it is, there was some running scenes that I remember that stood out where it just kind of looked like they're going like this a few times. <laughs> yeah. And. For, for me, I actually really enjoyed Kenobi. Um, there were moments I didn't really care for. There were some music cues that I wish were stronger. And uh, I just, honestly, for me, I really didn't need Luke at the end of that. <laughs> I could have done without Luke. And and this started the whole, I, I'm just, I, I, I know you might disagree, but I'm just over people getting stabbed with lightsabers at this point. So let's just <laughs> let's just call it a day. Yeah, yeah. Call it a day. Brock, how do you feel about Kenobi? Something has to be at the bottom. Um, yeah. So it has to be Kenobi for me. But like, yeah, I forgot about the whole lightsaber through the middle and then he, I'm alive again. <laughs> but you yeah. were dead. I was. <laughs> like, Two of them. Two of them in there. Yeah. Um, it's saving, gra saving Grace is, I think, I enjoyed Young Leia. I think that was fun yeah, sure. and seeing the uh, Obi Wan, whatever. But then, of course, you get you just write yourself into that corner. I'm like, why didn't she know him better? Blah blah blah. I mean, they made it work, I suppose. Uh, but I think the Inquisitors were nice to have. I think Inquisitors have just been always engaging to me. Mm -hmm. I, it's the Darth Vader effect. He's like, you put someone with a slight mask or just all black. I'm like, <laughs> eh, I'm in. So, yeah. Vader and Obi Wan had some of the greatest scenes in that too. They were fantastic moments. Pete Kenobi. Yeah, uh, for me it was it was number four on my list, mm. and I think solely because of all the television shows that we've had, I had it was first of all it was something I was like we don't need this show, <laughs> and then second I got I bought into the hype, and it was probably because I was at Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim, and mm. I. You know, we got to go to the premiere and it was just, you know, they had sold it as such a great and honestly, the opening scene with Order 66. I was yeah. like, and I remember watching that in the in the room with everybody Star Wars Celebration and they come up over the hill and I saw the kids. I was like, oh, no, this is not how they're starting <laughs> this. And and it was and I think I brought in so much expectation for Kenobi because it had you and McGregor because it had Hayden Christensen. And um, and it's funny. It's it's really interesting. Again, you step back and you you allow yourself to be real with these things after a little bit of time. And I think the the thing that really bothers me the most is the way the ugliest parts of the internet went after Riva, and for the wrong reasons. They should have gone after Riva because she wasn't as well developed as she could have been. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. not because of the actress and the color of her skin and all those <laughs> stupid things that they went after. Um, because I think that could have been a very interesting and also honestly, I, I'm totally with you, Brock. Having them both be stabbed and survive, it just I yeah. it's it it has you know, it's like it's it's like the the multiverse in, in Marvel, like there's no stakes. Somebody gets stabbed. Now we've had three people stabbed in the middle. We had Darth Maul cut in half, and they're yeah. cool. They're fine. So, um, but yeah, I think Kenobi was just, it was, I had such high hopes for it. And the production value wasn't there. And the story, 
I don't know. Again, I think it's one of those things that could have been a four part series and done mm-hmm. just as well, or a 12 part series and done just as well. I think it was just not spaced right. I think you're right on Riva, though. I think Riva needed way more develop. Like the, the idea was there, the yeah. execution wasn't. It was just yep. like, like I know what you're doing. You're just you're not you're not get. It's just not. It just didn't hook for me. So and and I I like. It's so funny. Everybody puts, especially those of us who hang out in the Twitter space. People are so quick to put somebody up on a pedestal, and they yeah. did that with Deborah Chow. And Deborah Chow had a great episode of Mando. And I honestly, I hate to put it this way, I don't know if she was the right one to bring this story together. I, I felt like, and and the other thing that's really important to keep in mind before people rip me apart for that is it was done during COVID. They were operating under very different circumstances to to put a, a show together. So I think people, we do need to remember that as part of our critique. Um, but overall, it just it missed more than it hit for me. The hits though were huge. The the Obi Wan yeah. and, and Vader scene was fantastic. Um, but all right, let's move on to the most disappointing <laughs> one on the list. <laughs> so I need to let everybody know that when I I asked everybody to, for their for the <laughs> rankings, I said put Book of Boba Fett number one to everybody. <laughs> And as I look here, not one person listened to what I said. Uh, This was uh, two or three on my list. It was pretty high on my list. I think everybody knows that I I genuinely, and I don't care what anybody says about me, I genuinely enjoy this show. There is something about it. There's a charm to it. There are, look, it's not entirely perfect. I'm not saying that it is, you know, from start to finish, the greatest thing I've ever seen. But I really enjoy it. I thought, for me, what they did with Boba Fett, was more intriguing than him just running around shooting people with lasers. I like yeah. the story that they were doing. And there was a part where Brock and I were doing the podcast, and I was like, in one of the first episodes, I said, you know what I love about Star Wars? When it's silent. In A New Hope, when 3PO and R2 are on the desert, and 3PO just walks the Tatooine for like four hours, I'm like, this is the <laughs> best thing to ever happen. Then we yeah. see the Jout. There's no talking for so long. And both of that kind of reminded me of like these little things in Star Wars I enjoy. And I, I'm not ashamed to say that I truly enjoy this one. And everybody is sighting. No, I'm just joking. I really enjoy this one, though. I think where where it is makes sense when you consider the five are. Uh, Pete, what do you think? of? I don't want to know what you think. I, no, I, 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 it's funny. <laughs> you and I joke a lot about this together. Book of Boba Fett was number five for me. And only, only because I feel like um, it's similar to my Deborah Chow comment. I feel like Rodriguez was able to do he did one of my favorite mando episodes but i don't think he was able to put together the full series and i think that that was part of the issue um and i i'm with you on on where they went with, but i think this this story unfortunately was doomed to to face yeah. the wrath of the fandom because the fans made him out to be something that this story went a, a much more interesting direction with um I thought it was great. And you know what? And beat me up if you like. I loved the mods. I thought they were fantastic. I loved that entire concept. Um, so I loved a lot about it. I again, I I I even I think I wrote a piece somewhere on my website or something about how I think the the biggest challenge was the fact that it wasn't Mandalorian episode, season three, the book of Boba Fett. Um, they could have done that and better integrated the 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 Mando story into it instead of it sort of being the problem is the fan base is so insane they <laughs> use that at, instead of using two really cool episodes of Mandalorian to praise the show they used it as a way to to rip it apart my only real big issue story wise is if if I was to tell Rodriguez to go back and do reshoots I would have had him shoot young Boba Fett and uh Cad Bane, the scenes yeah. that were cut from Clone Wars, so that when Cad Bane showed up at the end, you were like, oh my god, this is important. Mm. We knew it because we're nerds and we've seen agree, the, yeah. the cut <laughs> scenes, but to, like, when I again, when I talked to my daddy, he's like, I don't know who that blue guy was. It was a cool scene, but I don't know why I cared. It would have been real, it would have been more powerful if, we're, if we incorporated all of Boba Fett's memories and and you know shown more flash again an eight episode version mm-hmm. or take the two mando season episodes out and give us more of his like the the flashbacks that they had so quickly to um um to the the uh, the 
clone planet. Why can't I think Camino. Of it? Camino. There was so much opportunity to give us some of that as well, just to sort of round out the character completely. It would have made that last scene more powerful. But the one thing that I always talk about with Book of Boba Fett whenever I talk about the show is, in my head, I had written the last episode, and it was going to be the you know the Pikes were going to do this, and this was going to happen, the Huts were going to come back, and none of it happened, and I was disappointed. I watched it later that day with my son, who saw the gunfights in the street, saw the Rancor versus a mech, and was my son literally turned to me when it was over and was like, that was the coolest Star Wars I ever saw. And I was like, you know what? He's not wrong. Like that was like, that was all Star Wars. So it just didn't work for me. It was my number five, but it, it needs, it needs to be looked at from different angles. And, and again, it's my fifth favorite, right? It's not like I'll, I'll never watch it again. Cause I absolutely will. Brock, it was your number one with a bullet. <laughs> Actually, I did my my normal full Brock uh, move where I said Ahsoka and Book of Boba Fett are tied for third place. Um, but if I have to put something somewhere, I'm going to put Book of Boba Fett in my third spot because it does have a story and it does that amazing flex of like, oh, you thought this was just about Boba Fett? Well, here's Mandalorian season 2.5. Uh, I think that was great. And it's just like, there's so many cool characters. Like, obviously, Cad Bane can't come back. But, like, Black, Black Chrysanthemum. Like, yeah. yo, um, what's Oliphant's character's name? Oh, um. Cobb Vanth. Cobb oh, Vanth. Yeah. Thank you. I'm in. Like, all those characters, I will go back. And, like, there's just, like, this vibe of, like, if they ever do pursue, pursue, like, how do we reestablish Mandalore? It's like for a second there, Boba Fett had a vibe of like he could be that guy. Eh, <sighs> I don't know. Like that's a, it's a little yeah. reaching, but like it's like that's a cool idea. Like just take Din Jaren out of the mix and just throw all or the rest of the Mandalorians. Um, it's great, and it's just like I think for me it was just. Uh, I didn't like the story as much as James did, but I, I agree it was a full story, and it's like I want to go back into that. Um, I you know it's a missed opportunity that you didn't call it like the Mandalorian colon the, the book of Boba Fett, like that would have been great. Uh, I, one thing that you said, people, where people were tearing it down because of those episodes, which you're right, but on these lists, like the people that I asked. There were several people that said this was higher on their list because of those episodes. Yeah, those episodes mm -hmm. propelled them, and so that that's it's funny how time changes things. Like it, and Boba Fett, it might be number one next year. We don't know. We don't know. Um, all right, number three. Here we go. The big three. Is it going to be Mandalorian? Is it going to be Andor? It's going to be Ahsoka. <laughs> is number three. Look, I said this before we start. Like when we're doing this, Ahsoka would have been my number one, probably with a bullet if they would have stuck the landing i don't think the ending was bad it wasn't bad it just like i said it was just journey wasn't cutting it. out at the end it was nothing yeah it just kind of like you mentioned people like balen what's he gonna find oh he's okay i get i guess but not really like it, yeah. it just kind of it fizzled out ezra went back and brock and i talked on the show he's like what's gonna happen i'm like they're gonna go get them he goes but we just watched that i'm like you're right i, I don't know what the, i don't know what the point is anymore and that's yep. my problem with this with this series was i i, I love i got i just kept loving it and then it, it just kind of stopped being a thing brock uh yeah it's just it, this will be my number four space even though it is tied for third third place <laughs> with book of boba fett and like it's just yeah it's just it's like a cake without flour where it's like, well, I could eat this, but like it could be better. So and you know that, you know, it could be better. Like they could have never gotten to that galaxy part. They could have just like looked, stay like Balin and Ahsoka could have just stared at each other for four more episodes and I'd be in. So it's like, I don't know. It's like the word, like the thing that was get, they were searching for is what, more or less the the downfall of of the series to an extent like so many cool things happening but just like what so yeah um i i've said it before i will re-watch this show because it's just for me it's just really nice to look at and it's just yeah. it looks like concept art come to life so yeah i'm in yeah 
I had it at number two, um, oh. and it's because I loved ninety five percent of it up until the the very end. I think the the Anakin, the way they handled World Between Worlds without having to explain it. Um, uh, 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 what's her name? Uh, Ariana Goldblatt uh, as young Ahsoka was couldn't have been more perfectly cast. Um, Hayden as Anakin with a good director was something to behold. Um, he was so good. The, um, the as as Christine Ariel said, the attention to detail on his hair was amazing. <laughs> um, and but everything about it worked for me except the very end. And and I guess part of my brain is just like, well, that just means you're going to get more of it. Um, so I, I, I'm I'm okay with that. But I I do feel like it was. Also, you know, the first couple of episodes of Mando that were done by Filoni were were not great. I mean, they weren't bad at all, but they weren't like he was learning his way. He got to it with this. And I feel like he the evolution. It was one of those situations, too, where you needed patience and it paid off other than the Balin story, I think, Um in that, like, everybody was like, well, why is Ahsoka so sullen? And why is she, she's not the happy, smiling Ahsoka we knew back in the day. And the reality is it was perfectly directed. Like, she went through some shit. And she, like, when she finally came to grips with it, we got the smile. And we got the the joking, you know, kind of Ahsoka. And it really, it really, really worked very well. I thought um, um, live action... Sabine was amazing. Um, there were times where I was like, I'm watching the cartoon. I thought she was great. Um, Hera was was so good. Rebels is, you know, my favorite animated show. So to see it come to life was great. Um, but again, it's the fact that we we talked about it a lot on this particular episode. It was it was this, it fell into the trap of so many other streaming shows of saying, uh, you know, if, if we get another season, we're gonna set it up versus let's close it and then if we get another season we'll open it back up so which a new hope was a full story and yep. then it, g- it gave itself outs to for the sequel to do what it wanted and yeah i think we forget that i should have mentioned also i forgot these are on, we're only ranking season ones these are only see i mean only one of them has more than season one but to be <laughs> fair because right. the one thing that i i was saying is ahsoka season two might be the greatest thing we've ever seen Right, but we don't know. It might also be the worst. We don't know, and it might it'll change your, it'll change how you feel about season one. So I, I thought just doing season ones was important for Mando's sake because Mando season one was really good, but was it the best? Was it the best? Okay, top two. Brock, what do you think? Is number two. It's got to be Andor, I think. And if it isn't, I'm like, wow, what what fun. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Because, like, uh, the, the remaining two, I love these two. And, like, I'll get into, like, get into this as we go. But, like, if it's if it's Mando right now, I'll be amazed. Yeah, I'd be shocked, too. So you guys both think it's Andor? Yeah. Well, prepare to be... Yeah, it's Andor. <laughs> <laughs> it's Andor. Look, Andor had a lot of uh, number ones, but it had a lot of threes and twos actually a lot of threes and twos not a lot of fours uh so people no it didn't have a lot of five yeah it did have a lot of fives not a lot of fours mm-hmm. uh and or to me is the best looking of all of the shows it's probably like as a as a series itself it's probably the most solid of them all it's probably the best looking the best uh, active the best directed a lot of ways uh it's probably the least star wars also and i'm not afraid to say that mm. I don't know what that means. I, I talked to somebody who, who was like, it committed the most sins. He, it was his number one. And he said, it's committed the most sins <laughs> of Star Wars. It had swearing. It was for adults. It did a lot. And he was absolutely right. But does that matter? I don't think so. Uh, it was, I think it was number three on my list only because I'm a book of Boba Fett shill. Um, <laughs> so I, it might've been number two, actually. Uh, it, it's such a good series. And I'm really curious. And you're right, Pete. Like the three episode arc here, three episode arc here. And I think releasing three episodes off off the top the way they did was. Yeah. I, I don't think it would have been received as well if they did one up because that first episode is kind of like eh, that's fine. But right. when you get all three of them together, you're like, oh, this is awesome. So I think they were really smart on doing that, and I think that would have benefited for Boba Fett and uh, as well. But I just 
this show is I can't wait to see season two. I hope they don't botch it. <laughs> Because yeah. they're doing they're doing uh four years or three years or four years in season two like yeah every three sorry it, and yeah and it's supposed to literally end at the very beginning of yeah. Rogue One like literally yeah. like hand it off so yeah yeah so if they can keep up the quality from season one then I have like I just I think if we did next year like the top two seasons I can't see season two not like Matt and or not being it but the point though like Brock said like. People might not like like it. Just it isn't Star Warsy, so it might not be for everybody. But B two M O. Oh yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you, Droid. I'm with you, Brock. And or number two. Yeah, it's it's it 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 is in the same league of Last Jedi, where it's like let's take Star Wars and let's try to do something different. Even though like Last Jedi has your core Skywalker saga cast and it's in that timeline it's like it ryan johnson was like hey what if we like try something new and he didn't go super far but he's like okay i'll take you there and then we'll have these like cool little concepts of like perhaps what we are doing on a regular basis star wars doesn't work Andor is like that where you're just like well yes everyone likes lightsabers and everyone likes you know x-wings i go pew, 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 pew. like everyone likes that but like what if you talked about the people around it or I guess it's like the main focus is like, how did the rebellion start? Which is like at the core of Star Wars is what we're all kind of interested in. Cause it's like, we want the fun adventure of like these rebels that are like putting their lives on the line and just, they just happen to be, they happen to find a kid with a laser sword that saves them all. You know, like <laughs> it's like, it's very interesting. And just, and again, shooting uh, like star wars in real places is like oh yeah i mean like you know you, all those places they shot like the prequels in in like spain and italy you're like i would love to go there the places they shot uh and or i would love to find them because they know they exist to some yeah. extent that would be awesome like um yeah no it's like every episode of this this series i was like wow but there is that caveat of like Will you get this? You know, it's like when when does Darth Vader show up or when does baby Grogu show mm. up? You're like, this is not really that. And it and it, it's affiliated with that one movie that has that asterisk of like, I don't understand how this fits. So hmm. it's funny you, you, for life. It's funny you reference uh, Last Jedi with that because it's I hadn't thought about it until you said it. Last Jedi, as I said, is one of my favorite Star Wars stories, if not yeah. my favorite Star Wars story. Um but it's not a movie that I pop in that often. I don't sit and watch it. I'll, I'll, I last uh, Rise of Skywalker is my number eleven live action Star Wars film. Um, don't spoil it. This is January first. Oh, oh, sorry, January first. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, but uh, that's more easily watchable, like in the background. Same thing with Andor. Andor to me was just so brilliant at every level from the acting to the unique type of storytelling, but I haven't gone back and watched it. I, you know, it's, I haven't like just been like, eh, let me just catch an episode of Endor today. I have an hour to Andor. I have an hour to kill. Um, so from that perspective, I think that's why it was number three for me. Um, but again, very similar to rogue one in that um, when I was a kid, when I was younger and I first watched star Wars, what I loved was the stormtroopers and the X-Wings and the Star Destroyers. And as I got older, I loved the lore and the the mythology and the mysticism. And that wasn't in this. So I got I got seven-year-old Pete's favorite Star Wars out of Andor. Um, but but again, oddly enough, my my 11 year old son, who is my my little Star Wars buddy, he Ahsoka is number one for him by a long shot. And um, Andor, he didn't get through the first two episodes. He's never watched it all the way through. And although he does love, he loves Rogue One, but he doesn't watch that one either. So, again, similar to what you're saying before, Brock, it's it's a it's a personal preference. But I loved everything about Andor. I think on multiple levels, it's number one for me from a production standpoint, from a unique storytelling. Um, 
but it, it is the least Star Wars, I guess, is the right way to put it, like one of you guys said. So, yeah, I think it's it's number one, but it's also not number one. It's it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's interesting where it is, but it doesn't lessen it as a thing. I'm glad we like, I'm glad it's different too. Like, it's weird. It's like, I'm glad it's different. It's it's nice that it's, it's yeah. changed. And I think the difference between it and Last Jedi is Last Jedi was the only thing we had until Solo came and crushed it in a movie theater. Oof, man, it was the number one movie. Number one movie for two years. <laughs> two, I was just <laughs> anyway. Um, and I I'm really looking forward to season two. And I'm just like, just don't screw it up. I just, yeah. just like, don't screw it up because yeah. I don't know how. Like the first one, the first one surprised me. With what it was, and yeah, we'll see. And number one, look, man, <laughs> you, Baby Yoda, Grogu wins the day. But the thing, here's the thing, as because some people had this, it was not not last on anyone's list. It was number two on, on a few, or number four, I should say, on a few. But, but the one thing with the Mandalorian that you can't take away from it is none of these other shows on Disney Plus would exist without the success yeah. of yeah. season season one of The Mandalorian. So, And then Mandalorian season one, I thought the first episode was okay, and then we see Baby Yoda and everything just like the world changed. It's probably the best thing to happen to Star Wars since lightsabers. It's like that happened, and then the second episode, which we last year we did like our own personal rankings, that the egg episode is still like my favorite episode, yeah. I think, of live action. I love it. But as I think about it, as the season went on, I thought it got stronger, and that finale, and Quill's amazing, but the finale, I, like it's just so good. And I think Quill dying is the is probably the most the best thing to happen in any of these shows. Is we had a major character that we all fell in love with, yeah. And they, they, he was the character was sacrificed for Baby Yoda, who we all love. And, and it was just it's it is really a solid solid season. It was my number one. Uh, and uh, like I said, you can't have the rest without it. And I think the end, the, and this Taika Waititi did the last episode. And when he's doing his own Star Wars movie and pissing people off, he, <laughs> that's fine. But that episode was fantastic and it had humor in it and it was action packed and it had, it had everything you wanted in a Star Wars finale that we didn't even know. And we got Pedro Pascal's face, who is now the actor in everything. <laughs> I am Pedro Pascal that. No you are, I just, <laughs> I just, I, I, I don't I, I look. I think he's, I think he's a perfectly fine actor, but I don't understand the Pedro love. I hate to be that guy. Um, the Wonder Woman was awful, uh, <laughs> was so so bad, <laughs> and I blame him. I don't know why. I'm just gonna blame him. He wrote it. it. He wrote it and he wrote it and directed it. Him and Kathleen Kennedy, right? They yeah. were. <laughs> Uh, Brock, what are your thoughts on on Mandalorian? Uh, it, I it, this is just gonna like mimic what James said. It was just like and Andor and Mandalorian are neck and neck for my favorite of these shows so far in a season one sort of scenario. But it's like we said, it's like you can't have Andor without Mandalorian not just because it was a successful show, but it's just like you had to introduce people to the idea of watching a Star Wars TV show. It's as it's, it's like if they're like, you know, I really like The Hobbit. Do you got anything more? It's like, I do. <laughs> Let me get you this book. It's called The Silmarillion, and it's very interesting. But it's just like you can't do that by going to Andor and then Mandalorian. Yeah. It could have been a success, but it's like that's a lot. Like Mandalorian – needed a Favreau to come in, even though Filoni was back there pulling the threads. It's like, Favreau's like, no, no, we need to make a movie that every, or a a show that everyone will like. Without Favreau, we don't really have Iron Man, and we don't really have the Infinity Saga, you know? I mean, we also need, uh, you need, uh, what's his face? Kevin Feige. So, but like, it's just like, it's a great show. It goes, it gives you fun. It gives you like, you're like, hey, you like Star Wars? Well, like, let's do this. Let's give you something that is taking a revolutionary uh, technology, which was like a George Lucas like thing. But then also like, I'm giving you something advanced, but I'm also giving you that vibe of what you used to love. So it's like IG-11 is like half 
CG half like um puppet like uh like you know act, stuff like they, like those little details that get missed primarily in the prequel and maybe a little bit in the sequels is like I don't know I guess JJ did it a lot too but it's like it's like there's a reason that like you don't have to give us the shiny thing especially in Star Wars where we love it when something's banged up and used so yeah it's like it it launched disney plus it, it's really what had put them on the map so it's like and yeah baby grogu like those, those like his hand going out like this and his little like the gro and baby yoda at the time's little finger going like this is like did you hear that that's a new era for star wars like yep. that touching i don't even think they actually touch it just goes to credits <laughs> so i mean and then also uh one last thing it's just like what show before Mandalorian, outside of an Easter egg at the end, really made you sit and watch the rest of the credits because of that concept art you saw. Yeah, like, that's genius. You're like, oh, maybe that's just me though. No, I, mean, no, I, I thought that was great. Yeah. No, I think you're right, and I think it, it's number one for me for if if we got nothing else, and luckily we got a lot more. But if we got nothing else other than that baby Yoda reveal pulling down. I because in my head I was like, okay, 50 years old, so it's Boba Fett. He's going after Boba Fett. He's gonna find Boba Fett. That's where he's going. He's gonna go find Boba Fett. And then it was like, oh, it's that weird little like what is in it? I had no idea. And it was one of those rare moments. Uh, and only Star Wars gets him is it was the I am your father for yeah. a new generation. It put Star Wars back on the map. And honestly, I say it all the time. You can't throw a cat without hitting a baby Yoda picture or t-shirt <laughs> or poster mm -hmm. or action figure and to me i it's the it's the walmart test if you walk into walmart not only are you going to see it on uh see grogu on the t-shirt racks you're going to see it on the people walking around and those are the people that keep any franchise alive it, it you got grogu and you have captain america shield on people's t-shirts and those are the two things and that's what tells you that these things are alive and it brought star wars back i tell i might have told you guys the story before but i remember um that was the year that uh which was it was it uh it was which star wars movie came out that year it was uh it was rise right. skywalker right yeah um and we when when they were putting out star wars movies every every christmas we used to go with my uh uh i would go by myself i would go with my friends but we always went with my brother-in-law his wife who's like you know she's like that the classic I know what Star Wars is, but I, you know, she's the one who's like, is that Ray's mom in, in <laughs> Rogue One? But we walked out of Rise of Skywalker and she said, I thought there was a baby Yoda in this movie. And that was like, I was like, all right, that's it. Baby Yoda's everywhere. You don't even need yeah. to know. And it changed it. Honestly, as much as we've had Mando and Bo-Katan and Ahsoka and, and all these, all five of these episodes, uh, series, we have nothing without Grogu. Grogu brought everybody back, uh -huh. and and we, and I think it's I think it's awesome. And and now that's the only reason I want season four of Mandalorian is because I want to hear Grogu's first words. I, what are they going to be? I want <laughs> I, I, I want I, that's what I want. I'm all for more more Grogu. My my fear with Grogu is is Team Groot. It's like everyone loved yeah. Baby Groot. But when it became Teen Groot, we were like, "No, no, get out, stop it. We can't go. We can't go too much further because at some point he's going to have to become an adult." And yeah. I don't. I don't. Uh, he will. Uh, I my my big prediction. Not my. It's not my big prediction. My stupid little thought is that <laughs> quite a bit different than my big prediction. My stupid little thought. My big prediction. Whatever. Um, is Grogu will be in the Ray movies? Really? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Put Grogu on the big screen to make sure if you if you don't love it like that's like that's the tagline. If you don't love Daisy Ridley, you're gonna love Baby Grogu. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, the Ray movies. While we wrap up, I'm really excited for Ray because yeah, I, I know people are like hit or miss with the character, but there's so much growth you could do there. Like you could take that character and make something new with it that expands and goes forward because as much as i love mando and, and and andor and all these it's in this little time like go forward i want to go forward i want to yeah. move past what we've got let's keep going let's push it and uh, so i'm excited to see what the future has for the galaxy far far away and, and daisy's acting in last jedi is 
amazing. It really is so good. I can't wait to see more of her back at some point. She was even better in the book of Boba Fett. <laughs> she was. She was. She was Black Crescent. A lot of people don't know that she was. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. Pete, where can everybody find you at? And name drop all you want. Oh, I, I'm I'm sorry. For that. Yeah, we. Uh, um, you can follow me at ATGcast on Twitter. Um, you can check out our shows at uh, the SSWnetwork.com. We have uh, Around the Galaxy, which is our interview show. We have podcast The Wills, where we take deep dives, and we do a live Friday night show just about every Friday in our YouTube channel called Force Connect, where it's me, it's Nick Milkey, my co-host, and our friend Chris Ryan's, and and sometimes James. Um, and we uh, we take your calls and we look at the chat and we just talk about whatever the news of the week is on Star Wars and have a drink and hang out on a Friday night and just uh, it's a fun hang. So you can go to the sswnetwork.com to find all our stuff. Have you ever been sloshed by the end of one of those shows? Uh, this past right. week, yeah. It, it was uh, it was Nick's <laughs> birthday. It was Nick's birthday, and we did um, uh, we did uh, buzzed word bingo, and we had uh, our friend uh, sort of matching. And when we hit all the words on the on the line, we would do a shot. And um, this uh, this bottle of whiskey was full uh-huh. when we started, <laughs> and that's it's an hour and a half show, so. Um, yeah, but yeah, we but we have fun. We have fun. <laughs> it sounds like fun. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us. This is your Thanksgiving. We should have said Thanksgiving. Off the yes. Time. You left your family. You left dinner. You're like I did. I was in the middle of dinner. Yeah. I said, "Let me just grab my wine. I got to go talk to my friends in Canada." <laughs> and my wife was like, "Where are you going?" And I said, "I, I can't. I ha- this is very very important. It's tradition." <laughs> It's this crazy. is like I'm the Detroit Lions of of yeah. uh, of Rebel <laughs> Scum podcast. I have to be here on Thanksgiving. It's in my contract. You, I've been to a Lions game on Thanksgiving, and it is a <laughs> ton of fun. By the way, a ton <laughs> of fun. Lions games. Brock, anything else you want to say? Um, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pete. Thanks again for joining us. It's always fun to talk to you on. Th- I can't believe it's already Thanksgiving. Like this is insane. <laughs> crazy uh like the year just flew by it's gonna be 2024 in a couple months brock you were always scum (laughs) rebel scum (laughs) hey scumbags thanks for watching don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video as always please subscribe to our youtube channel rebel scum podcast for all the latest videos